Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Tishenko. I am a software developer at TPAM System Ukraine. I am focused on various topics on CNLRM. Last time is mostly virtual related. Today I'm going to talk about the virtual support on CNLRM. I will briefly describe what is already done and upstream in some kind of weather report. After that, I will talk in detail about the solution based on XenGram mappings as a safe and secure way for the memory sharing. It was presented in last year in summit by Jürgen Gross, but it is already upstreamed and supported on RM. So I will discuss how it works. The virtual advantages are described on the slide. I just would like to say that virtual is so important in embedded world as well. For the instance, the virtual usage is a strict requirement in the automotive domain. There are a few virtual related activities I am aware of. Some of them are already described on corresponding Xen Wiki page. Some of them are not yet, such as various Linaros and RM activities targeting virtual backends. I am going to talk about the virtual activities in which I am involved in. If you navigate to Xen Wiki page, you will see the development approach named Virta using IREP server and foreign mappings. This development approach is based on Xen's ability to trap and decode guess assesses to memory and forward these assesses to the backend for the future emulation and the backend's ability to map arbitrary guess pages to actually assess guess data. With that approach, it is possible to run the guess complete and modify it, but all guess memory is accessible by the backend. Everything needed for this approach to work is already upstreamed. IREC server is a key component here. The IREC server and device model were x86 specific features initially, but they were made common and ported on RM. Guest notification. The device model operation hypercall collections was extended with new ARM specific hypercall for the backend to be able to notify the friend front end using the SPI memory sharing. Backend uses a functionality for the privileged foreign mapping to be able to assess guest memory. The foreign mappings are supported for all domains on ARM as we already implemented the proper reference counting of foreign entries. Also some work to improve and harden grant and foreign mappings in Linux has been already done. I am speaking about new feature on RM, named extended regions. The idea here is that Xen calculates and reports extended regions to the guest via device tree or ICPI means. The extended region is a region of guest physical address space which is unused. It could be safely used to create external mappings. With that, we don't waste the main RAM pages anymore when using a new Xen. So we don't need to worry about the possibility of exhausting host memory when we need a lot of foreign mappings. As the extended regions are big enough, the extended regions are supported for all domains on RM. Also, the grantable support in Xen itself was improved and hardened. I am speaking about simplified M2P-like approach for the Xen hit pages mapped as RAM. The last bit is the proper configuration support. To stack needs to know how to deal with such virtual backends that only rely on the extended stored data. Also, we need to allocate virtual MMI parameters, interrupt and memory range for every virtual device and insert the resulting virtual device node into the generated guest device tree. This is also supported. It's worth mentioning that only virtual block device configuration is supported for now, but support for other device configurations, network, etc. can be added using existing example. Well, everything would be wonderful if it wasn't a valid concern which was outlined several times in various modeling discussions. The concern is that with foreign mappings, all this memory is accessible by the backend. The malicious backend running in non-trusted domain can take advantage of this. The more without specific XSM policy, the malicious backend could even access hardware's domain's memory. 
This various asset pump as we would like to run the virtual backends in non-hardware domains. While investigating how to restrict the virtual backend, I considered a few development approaches. Some of them are analyzed in detail and prototyped. The possible approaches how to restrict the virtual backend are summarized on the slide. I just would like to put emphasis on the fact that Xen community is not the single hypervisor community which is interested in creating less privileged backend. This is also an area of interest for the Linaro project Stratos. Before focusing on using grants for Virtua, which became a final choice, as you might know, I did investigations of Virtua MMU. I even created a POC. I haven't made it public. I discussed it with Xen ARM maintainers internally. After the long discussion and realizing what the proper solution would take, it was decided not to stick to that approach, but look at using grants for Virtua. The grant-based approach wouldn't require any modification to the Xen itself and would likely be welcomed by Xen community. If you navigate to the Xen Wiki page, again, you will also see the development approach named Virta using Xen grants. Jürgen Gross, the author of the development approach, shared his Linux patches and provided the support. I was wrong when I initially thought that Jürgen's solution would require modification to the virtual infrastructure or specification. As it turned out, no modifications were needed. In general, any existing front-end should work with grants if DMA API are used for the operation with virtues and DMA addresses in this virtues are 64-bit addresses. Also for this to work, we need the ability to allocate consecutive grants for multi-page allocations. The consecutive or contiguous grants are needed for the resulting DMA address to be also contiguous. After playing with the series and making sure that it would work nicely, I extended it, made generic and functional on ARM with device 3. This is already upstream to Linux. Jürgen has made the restricted memory access and Xen more flexible. Initially, the restricted memory access was global, but now it is per device. Jürgen has also upstream that. As I already mentioned, the grand basis solution requires zero changes to the Xen itself. However, some work should be done by the tool stack. I am speaking about some additional information to be passed to the guest. The tool stack ARM side is already upstream, but of course there is some work to do on x86. So how does it work on RM? For the HVM guest, this restricted memory access enabled and without forcing grant usage, only Xen Grand DMA devices are required to use grants. The Xen Grand DMA device is a device which is marked by the tool stack as one that is required to use grants for the virtue. But in general case, it could be not virtue device as there is no virtue specific here. On RM, we reuse a generic IMMU device 3 binding to communicate the specific information for the devices for which the restricted memory access needs to be enabled. And in order to reuse IMMU binding, we introduce new Xen Grand DMA binding and stop IMMU driver. We use endpoint ID to pass the backend ID, domain ID to the guest. The backend domain ID is needed for the grand mapping API. So to say, just need to create specific IMMU node and insert IMMU's property point to that node into all virtual MMI device nodes. Those backends are going to run in non-hardware domains, which are not trusted by default. The GANs then will use that information as indicator to enable grants for these devices by assigning same grant DMA operations. This feature works out of the box on RM. No extra patches are needed. All we need to do is just use upstream Xen and Linux versions. But sure, there is some work to do on x86. At least I find a way how to pass the backends domain ID to the guest. Unlikely the device 3 will be used for that purpose.
In that picture, you can see two different types of virtual devices running within the same guest. Usual and synchron DMA device, thanks to the flexible restricted memory access per device. Device zero is not required to use grants. This is fine as long as it's backend running in domain zero hardware domain, but device one is required to use grants. So it's backend running in the main D must support grants. Otherwise, the device one won't be functional. You can see that generated by the tool stack device three snippet, which represents device one with IMMU's property inserted. The stream ID here means the backend domain ID. The virtual disk is a virtual MMI reference backend implementation. This is the first fully supported prototype for virtual block device on CN without compromising the security model. In this picture, you can see the backend structure. The Xen specific components here are colored. The new components here is Xen GT tab, which is marked with blue color. Next picture demonstrates the interaction between the backend and the external world. Xen with its interface connects the backend running in the host with frontend running in the guest. So what is needed to get it up and running on RM? Mainline Xen should be built with the following options, IREC and EXPERT. Mainline Linux should be built with the following options. Xen Virtue should be enabled, Xen Virtue Wars grants should be disabled. The backend itself is located at Xentroops repository. The backend supports legacy and modern virtual MMI transports and foreign and grant markets. There are three possible memory mapping modes supported by the backend. If all passive addresses are normal DMA addresses, we can either map and map IO buffers at every request or pre-map all guest memory in advance and just calculate host address at every request based on incoming guest address. The map in advance options is disabled by default, so if you are interested in such optimization, you should enable it only if you are going to run the backend in the hardware domain. And last, if all passive addresses are grant based DMA addresses, we can only map and map IO buffers at every request. We cannot pre map all guest memory in advance or cache mappings because with grant mappings, the backend can only map granted by the front end pages and nothing else. You can see the example of guest configuration file. You can see the example of virtual block device configuration for the guest. Here we reuse the Xen PV block device configuration by introducing new backend type and specification property. Backends retrieve all configuration from the Xen store. The static configuration might be useful for the DOM0 is not supported yet. The last bit is tuning. If you are going to run the backend in non-hardware domains, you will need to configure your XSM Flask policy to allow the backend to issue device model for and mapper hypercalls. Also, you might need to increase the maximum number of grant frames the guest is allowed to use if you are going to run some test application that requires a lot of grants to be allocated at the same time. Probably the all. The last thing to mention is performance testing. I performed basic performance testing and the performance for block device operation when using grand mappings is just slightly less than using foreign mappings. The performance drop is no more than just 3-5%. This is quite good result for gaining good security model and without modification to the hypervisor itself.